Oh my god, bro. <laughs> I was watching um <laughs> So, I, I was watching um I was watching my old videos back then. And I'm not I'm not playing the sound by the way. I'm not letting you guys ever hear how I sounded like or how I was talking like, but I'm just watching my old videos. So, back then, right? I wanted to be a YouTuber, but specifically, I wanted to be a rapper. Not just a YouTuber, but a rapper. And so if you look at just just my face and how I used to how I used to act back then. And by the way, this is not just me, but everybody back in the day, or even right now, by the way, not just back in the, back in the day, everybody. It's almost like people have like specific personalities that's very similar to everybody else. Like no one truly has their real natural personality. Like if you go to a classroom, high school classroom, and you look at every single student, if you were to look at all of them, you would notice that all of them are actually pretty much the same. Not many of them are actually different. So this was me back in the day, and I used to think... I used to love thinking that I was very different from others, even though I think I was pretty much the same. And I'm like, why is that? Why is everybody almost like they're the exact same thing? And by the way, this is exactly why from a given classroom, everybody's going to have the same future if they don't change themselves. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly, exactly how to change yourself to the point that if you were to look at this one classroom, everybody's going to have the same life in the future, but you are going to have a different life. And this is why I'm going to be talking to you about why music music is not good for you man and here's why music is horrible for you so if you look right here right what's the strongest thing that you can think of on earth this right here right mountains mountains are the strongest thing on earth there is nothing really that can compete with the strength of mountains but it's like what can destroy what can destroy mountains well if we had this right here iron tools you can destroy mountains i mean pretty much habibi all you need is just the tools and then the will to remove the mountain. This guy himself, the man who single-handedly carved a road through a mountain to help his village. They actually used to say he helped his wife. He loved his wife so much. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to build a road for you through this mountain. So tools can cut through mountain. But like, what can cut through tools? Well, if you take one tool, put it in the fire long enough, this tool is going to be non-existent. Fire destroys anything that's physical. But like, what can destroy fire well habibi you don't have to think about it too much water extinguishes fire fire has no chance against water but again it's like if you look right here these are waves right what's causing these waves so what's controlling the water well wind habibi wind is the thing that moves water so pretty much you could see if we had like a little triangle the first one was mountain then it was iron then it was fire then it was water and now it's wind. So you could pretty much say wind is the strongest thing on earth. Wind is the thing that's like the most abundant on earth. But what's stronger than wind? Do you really think there can be something that's stronger than wind? And the reality is, is that there is something that's stronger than wind. And so the thing that can control the wind is sound. Sound itself. The air molecules vibrate as the sound moves through the air. So sound can actually control the wind. It can control the air. Now, all of this, what does all of this mean? Habibi, all of this means that sound is the strongest thing on earth. Sound is the most abundant thing on earth. It's the most important thing on earth. And by the way, it's so important to the point that if you look at like the body, right? Or anything, if you go down to like the molecule and then from the molecule, you go down to the atom. And then from the atom, you go down to like whatever that's like down there, eventually you'll find strings, right? So everything is actually made out of strings. And so this has actually been proven through quantum physics. Like if you look at it right here, strings is basically like the building blocks of everything. But it's not just strings. Like yeah, it's strings, but it's strings and vibrations. Like vibrations is what gives life to the strings. So it's like if you look at an object, that object is existing because of the way it's vibrating. That's why we say it's like there's nothing at rest. Everything is, everything is changing because everything is vibrating. And without this vibration, nothing basically exists. So this vibration is just sound. So sound is the strongest thing on earth. It's like the, the building block for everything. And so why is this important? I mean, Habibi, if you knew the power of sound, it's almost like, like you literally find the thing that moves the world. And so by the way, we think that nowadays, like the technology is so advanced and we're so much better than like our ancestors, but our ancestors knew how to control sound. They knew how to use sound. 
how do you think the pyramids were built? I mean, this isn't really something that a lot of people talk about, and it's obviously not like super, super proven. But this is basically a theory still, you could say. But pyramids were, were built <laughs> with sound. Habibi, those, like, this thing right here, like the, the blocks that are in the pyramids, they're so big, like they're huge. So do you really think like a slave or just someone with tools can just come here and then take these blocks that were like huge and then try to like move it around and not just move it around, but like move it around through cities. So I truly believe that the only way this was possible is because they knew how to use sound to move things, to basically levitate things. And this is this is even sometimes proven even to this like to this day. I haven't really watched this video of this guy, but I feel like he's actually levitating something. This is the power of sound. And by the way, this power of sound is so powerful to the point that Allah put in the Quran, had we sent down this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen this mountain humbled and torn apart in awe of Allah. Now, why do you think that here is talking like it literally said the word Quran and not the word book? Because sometimes Allah refers to the Quran as like the kitab, the book. Kitab means book. But Allah here specifically used the word Quran. And that's because Quran does not just mean the book. Quran means the thing that's being recited. And if you're reciting something, what are you doing? You're using sound. And by the way, this is why every single letter in the Quran is like magnificent. New word, right? But it's actually magnificent. Every single word, every single letter has been put there for a reason. And so even if you just, if you repeat the sound of the letters of the words, you would find a difference in your life. And so this is what I'm trying to get at here. Music is the worst thing that happened to people. And when I say that to people, you guys get so pissed off. I remember I made a video once about how music is so bad for you. And a lot of people actually got so pissed off. You guys were just like, listen, when I'm depressed, what am I supposed to do? I go back to music so I can feel better. But Habibi, that's the thing. You're, you're depressed because you're listening to the music. You're not listening to the music to feel good and then now you feel good. You're depressed because of the music. It's like, think about it. If someone is depressed and then he goes and takes drugs, like he feels good for a bit, but then he goes back and becomes worse. And then now he's like, you know what? I need to go back to the drugs. It's an addiction that you guys have. And so the moment that I stopped listening to music, I don't know, it's like even, even my personality changed so much. And by the way, I was like a huge Eminem fan, but that's the thing. Music actually destroys you. Because if music is able to destroy mountain, if sound is so powerful, to the point that it can destroy mountains, sound is going to destroy your life too. Or sound is going to benefit your life too. Because remember, fire, water, wind, all those things, you can use it to destroy things, but you can use it also to benefit things. And so this is the beauty. That's why I always say it's like, I always tell you guys, do dhikr. Dhikr is so powerful because when you're doing dhikr, like that's why also it's powerful to just literally sit down and just recite the 99 names of Allah. Like pick a name and then just recite it and actually use your sound like for example we can even say the word like if you're seeing like your life is becoming horrible well you just need more light in your life right so if you recite the the name of allah and nur like you just literally sit down like this and then just say ya nur ya nur ya nur and keep saying that over and over again habibi like you'll notice that your heart itself will start trembling you do this enough times it'll change you it'll actually change you so much now just imagine all of you guys are just literally sitting down and you have all these things in your ear and you're constantly listening to music. You're constantly listening to these sound waves that are destroying your mind. They're destroying your thoughts. You're destroying your body, destroying everything. And as a result, it's actually destroying your life. So just, just imagine it's like you're always sitting like this, listening to these sound waves. What do you think is really happening then? And this is why I'm trying to tell you, everybody has almost the same exact personality. No one's, no one's original anymore. Everybody's the same. But then when you find someone who's not really exposed to these like satanic devilish sound waves, you could tell us like this person is coming from, from light. Like they actually have light within them. And this is why you even see people like this guy, or not just this guy, but ev like everybody within the same industry, it's so easy for them to influence people. It's so easy for them to control people. And it's just because they know how to use sound. Like they might, they might not know it like to the, to the science of it, but they know it's like sound influences people. My music influences people. And so as a result, they might not even know it, but I mean, they're actually destroying the world. And so it's it's so beautiful, bro, because look at this. I was actually reading this thing right here and it was so beautiful. By the way, listen, I know I make, make money online videos and all that stuff. This stuff is important. I'm
I love making videos about this stuff because I feel like it's so beneficial for you guys. So for those of you who are always like, hey man, you stop making make money online videos. I'm still doing it, but I'm making these videos for these like these because this is the type of stuff that's going to change your life. People are literally living their whole lives in depression. They're living their whole lives in sadness and they don't even know why. So me making these videos, it's like, it's almost like I feel like I actually truly have a responsibility because Allah actually, I mean, I truly feel like Allah gave me this knowledge and I'm like, well, if Allah's giving me this knowledge, am I, like, am I not supposed to go and spread this knowledge so it's like it can actually help more people? Am I not supposed to do that? Like I have a platform. Am I not supposed to like actually use it to benefit people even more? So this is why I'm making such videos. And this is what I know. Like the Quran is coming to you so it can, so it can save your life, man. Not just to like you to sit down and recite it and then have it just sitting down on the on the shelf and all that stuff. Like there's some hidden, not hidden, but like beautiful lessons within the Quran that if you were just to like look at them and apply it to your life right now, it's truly going to change your life. And so here Allah is like, put your trust in the Almighty because He sees you even when you're like standing and even sees you when you're doing when you're doing your, your sujood. But then it's interesting. Here Allah is like, He alone is indeed all hearing, all knowing. So if He says the word all hearing, hearing, remember what we said? Sound is the strongest thing in earth, the strongest element on earth. So how do you hear sound through your ears, right? So here Allah is like, إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So it's almost like Allah is about to tell you something that's related to this topic. And then here Allah is like, shall I inform you of whom the devils actually descend upon? This is very interesting. They descend upon every sinful liar. Okay? So Allah is saying the devils, they descend on the people that lie. But then he continues, who gives an attentive ear, ear, once again, listening, وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ كَاذِبُونَ So they're giving an attentive ear, and then most of these people that the devils descend upon them, most of them are liars. And then here it says, وَالشُعَرَى يَتَّبِعُهُمْ الْغَاوُونَ And so this is so interesting, bro. When Allah is talking about the shu'ara, like what is he really talking about? Listen, so the main topic here is sound, right? We're talking about sound. Like there is, it's not by accident that Allah is talking about a sam And here is like, Allah is the sami or al-alim. And then all of a sudden it's talking about like, where, who do the devils descend upon and all that stuff. And then here it's like, وَالشُعَرَى like the poets, the ones that are depressed, the ones that are deviant, they follow the poets. What does that mean? So you know back in the day, like the entertainers of back in the day in the Arab world were the poets. Nowadays, who are the entertainers? It's the YouTubers. It's the singers. It's the people that are making entertaining videos. I know I'm one of them, right? But here it's like talking about the ones that are, the ones, the ones that lie. The ones that are like deceiving the world. So here, we're not just really talking about the poets. Habibi, we're not just talking about the poets. We're talking about the ones that are mainstream, that are entertaining the world. Because that's what the poets used to do back then. And then here it's like, do you not see how they rant in every field? But the translation does not do justice, man. أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّهُمْ فِي كُلِّ وَادٍ يَهِيمُونَ Here it's talking about a valley. A valley. Allah's like, you see these poets, they go, any valley that they see, they always go into it. So when we're looking at people like this, who use sound to influence people, Allah saying such people who are like the poets of nowadays, the entertainers, the liars, such people nowadays, what did they do? What did this guy do? This guy, what he did is that, first of all, he twerked on the devil or something. And then the second thing is like, okay, now I'm becoming a bit irrelevant, right? People stop listening to this stuff as much. He's like, okay, now I need to get more attention. So I got to do the next thing, the next new thing. So then he deceived the whole world, making them feel like, oh, I'm coming back to repent and all that stuff. And he started making fun of like, like the Prophet Jesus. So basically, he got people's attention once again. And then he just went and he started making fun of Prophet Jesus. This is what Allah means by these people. They go through every valley. Why does Allah say the word valley? By the way, this is figurative speech. It's not literal speech. It's figurative speech. When someone, like when you when you look at someone and you tell, and you basically describe them as they just go through every valley. What's happening in a valley, bro? You got to use your brain sometimes. So when you look at a valley like this, like they go through every valley. When you're in a valley, you're at the lowest and everything else is above you. So what Allah is saying here is that for these people, there is nothing beneath them. These people have no standards. They would do anything for attention. These people, Habibi, they're so misguided. They're such liars that they would do anything for attention. Don't, do you not see that all of them they go through any valley. They rant in every valley. And so these people will do anything so they can bring back this audience that they're deceiving. 
So what I'm trying to say is that all this music that you guys are listening to, you're listening to people who are going through every valley. These people that you're listening to have no standards. They have nothing beneath them. They are beneath everything. They would do anything like Habibi. This freaking guy right here, he was twerking on the devil. And now he's making fun of Jesus. Like, how can you make fun of like a... It doesn't matter who the figure is, but like this figure, everybody believes in this figure. And now you're just coming and making fun of like this figure that everybody believes in. Like, what kind of insanity is that? And this is not just him, by the way. Maybe he's the one that's like <clears throat> in the lowest valley. But every single artist within this within this industry, they're all the same. They go through every valley. They're ranting in literally every valley. And now what these people do is that you would see, like they would say something, they would say one thing, and then do another. They always give promises and then do something else. Just like what this guy said, Lil Nas, he was like, oh, now I'm thinking of repenting or something like that, going back to like the religion and all of, all of that. And he basically got everybody like thinking, oh, but this guy's going to become good and all that stuff. But then here Allah is saying, it's like, these people, they say what they do not do. They say that's all they do. They say what they don't do. So these people, the artists, which are like the poets, the ones that follow them are the deviants. The ones that follow them are the depressed. So you, you guys, not you guys, obviously, because you guys are watching my channel, but like you guys, the ones that are always listening to, to the music, and you, you come and tell me, it's like, listen, I want to listen to this music because I'm depressed and music is the only thing that's going to help me like feel better. Well, that's exactly what these people are doing. The entertainers of nowadays, all their audience are the ones that are all filled with depression. These people don't even know you. These people don't even care about you. These people have 0% standards. They would do anything just so they can get your attention. So when you're listening to the music with the horrible frequency, with the horrible sound waves, like that is destroying your heart. You don't even you don't even know how it feels to be on the other side. So what I'm trying to say is that this use of sound is so powerful. Know how to use it. Instead of listening to all this horrible frequency, to all this horrible sound made by people who don't even care about you, the entertainers, who, who follows them are the ones that are deviants and depressed and they go through every single valley, they rent through every single valley. These people, instead of living such life where you don't even experience proper like like the power of your heart, just literally sit down, take one of the names of the night and names of Allah and then just basically keep chanting it, keep reciting it. Like literally sit down and just be like, Ya Nur, Ar Rahman, just say the words, like say them over and over again. This is how sound is used. Like by the way, when, when I say the word Noor, like, you do realize, like, the three letters, Noon, Waw, Ra, like, Noor, those letters are there for, literally for a reason. Like, the sound that this word makes, it's making it for a reason. And so the effect that the word Noor would have on you is that if you keep chanting it, just the vibration of the sound is going to fill your heart with light. Because that's what Noor means. Noor means light. And it's one of the 99 names of Allah. So if you just literally, literally sit down, and just keep reciting this name over and over again, it's going to change your heart, bro. Trust me, it's going to change your heart a lot. And then even if you sit down and you're like, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Ghafoor, like you literally say that, you'll notice that your heart is healing too. Like it's almost like it's being forgiven. And that's because Ghafoor is the one that forgives. So these names, man, these names are so powerful. Instead of listening to all this horrible sounds that these people make, start chanting dhikr, start Chanting the names of Allah. And by the way, like you don't have to be Muslim to do this. Even if you were like a non-Muslim, once again, sound. Sound is so powerful. If you just use the vibration of the sound of these letters, of these words, it's still going to have an effect on you. Like music is going to affect a Muslim and a non-Muslim. It's going to affect everybody because that's how powerful sound is. But then when you start putting like proper sound into your life, your personality is going to change. And that's the thing. It's, it's like, Joe Dispenza actually talked about this. He's like, if you want to change your personal reality, well, you got to change your personality. And the best way, the best way to, to change your personality is through sound. I told you, sound can destroy mountains. It can destroy water. It can destroy fire. It can destroy everything if you know how to use it. The pyramids, bro. The pyramids were built through sound. Or at least like it was like a theory, right? Through levitation, sound waves, like vibrations. So if you just use this on you, Habibi, like your life is going to change. It's going to change to the better. Whatever you want, you'll get... Because now you're going to be living your, your life through light, not through de depression, not through being one of the Ghawun, the deviators that listen to these poets. You're not going to be from one of these people. And this, this right here is actually life-changing. So my exercise for you, or like my homework for you, is that just literally sit down for just once a day, right? Sit down and just say the word, the, the name Noor, a hundred times. 
per day. That's it. So just literally sit down and just say, Ya Noor, Ya Noor, Ya Noor. By the way, hold on, hold on. You do know, I just yelled so hard. But you know in the Quran, when you're when you're praying, and then when you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, if you look at Surah Al-Fatiha, it's like, you know the first one, it's like, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. The entire surah, it all ends with the with the with the sound in. Do you know why it ends with the with the sound in? Because Habib, I told you, sound is so powerful. Because when you're when you're reciting it and you keep saying the 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 sound in, in is the thing that affects your heart the most, and this has been proven. I don't know where it's like where I read this before, but it's actually been proven. When you read the word or say the sound in, it just it activates your heart. And that's why if you go back to my old video about how to pray properly, like the, the Qiyam part when you're standing in the Salah is the part where it's like you're bringing your heart back to what's important, which is Allah. So when you're literally standing like this and you're reciting the, the sound in, you're bringing your heart back to Allah. That's what the sound in does. How beautiful is that, man? And once again, I told you, like the, the, single, the, the single building block in life is string theory, like the strings that are building everything around you. But these strings are being vibrated through sound. Like vibration is what gives life to these strings. So you can have a mic. So you can have a human. You can have like a laptop and all that stuff. Sound is that powerful. If this Quran, which is the recited thing, if these words from the Quran were sent down on a mountain, this mountain would crumble. It would literally crumble. That's how powerful sound is.